We're standing by actually to speak with Nadia Lim. Uh, needs no introduction at all. And I wanted to talk to her about a fantastic new shop in Arrowtown. It's called Royal Burns. So I think Nadia's had to retreat to a vehicle in Auckland somewhere. So let's see if she's with us. Uh, kia ora, Nadia. How are you? Kia ora, Leanne. I'm good, thing. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm in the car, in a car park in, in Auckland. We, we just touched down and arrived in Auckland a couple of hours ago. Oh, sorry about this. Last thing you need. <laughs> okay. And you've got your children with you and you're trying to have a holiday, yeah? Yeah, and, and so far they're um, being well behaved and staying really quiet, but um, apologies if that changes drastically. I don't mind. I, it's, it's just a <laughs> natural day, a, a day in the life of, isn't it? You know, I love kids, so um, that, that's totally great. So, uh, so oh, good, good that you're having an escape, but um, hey, we've been talking about just before we progress into food. Is, it, is the weather a bit stormy in Auckland today? Yeah, it's pretty grey. I mean, it's not like a beautiful central Otago blue sky day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you must love your life on the Crown Terrace. Is it? Is it? Would you say it's going well? Oh, it's pretty stunning. I mean, I think you know, you anything could be happening, but when you look up at those mountains, you it just changes everything. You just go, wow, I'm lucky. Yeah, it's it's stunning. I, I think that we live in like literally the most beautiful place in the world. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. And uh, like I said in the preamble, I love what you're doing with Royal Burn. Uh, it's a, it's a favourite of mine now. I, I think it's great, but I want you to describe... Oh, thank you. Oh, I, I really do. I really mean that. I think it's it's a fantastic addition to Arrowtown. And, and I just think with people travelling at the moment, I want people to, you know, to call in uh, because a lot of people are on the move. You've gone north and people are becoming south. Uh, but but it's a, it's a whole sort of like paddock to plate concept. So why why did you and and your husband decide to um to go ahead with this project? I've always been really well, really obviously you know obsessed with food. But yes. um, my love of food goes even further than that. Like I I want I have a real love of um, producing food as well. You know, growing it, raising it, and I want to be able to share that with as many people as we can. Um, and we, we are very lucky ourselves. Our family eats like true paddock to plate. We are so lucky we, you know, hunt or raise all of our own um, meat. We have our, all of our own eggs and honey and all of our own vegetables. Um, and I wanted, you know, a little shop that could be a true farm shop where people could actually experience real um, farm to plate. Yeah, and so that's why we opened the little Royal Burn Farm Shop in yeah. Arrowtown. And so all of our um, lamb and... Um, uh, other like meat products, um, our pasteurized eggs, our honey, our sunflower oil, our market garden vegetables um, can all be found in the shop. And when I say it's like true farm to plate, it's literally, you know, the, the vegetables will be harvested and then they're in the shop the next day. Really? Um, that quickly? Meat, oh, yeah. Yeah, because it's only 10 minutes up the road. The farm's like about a 12-minute drive from the farm shop. So we've got our own little delivery truck um, and that takes it down a few, all the produce down a few times a week. Um, yeah, and like our, our lamb is, it's very unique, our farm. We've got our own um, micro abattoir, so an MPI accredited micro abattoir. So our lamb is actually born, raised, um, killed and butchered on the farm. Um, mm, doesn't wow. get more kind of, you know, farm to plate than that and then directly delivered to the farm shop and also lots of restaurants um, around the Wakataboo Basin as well. Yeah. That's right. That's why it's so good because your lamb is absolutely amazing it's what i look for now and even if i go to other stores you know if i can't get to royal burn and i do see it there now and i go ah that's great because i know oh, no really i know what i'm getting and it just tastes different there's something so special yeah about well it's it. home kill yeah a lot of farmers will know the difference in taste between home kill um just i guess because you know the animals had so little stress like as minimal as absolute possible um like i'd say i mean i've i've been in the abattoir a few times but uh they probably it's probably about 10 seconds and you know they're until bang they're gone <laughs> yes <Yeah, laughs> they're so out there's not suffering yeah yeah exactly right. yeah. and you can tell when yeah. you eat a, a stressed animal uh without sounding too you know too precious you really can i mean it's awful to think you, you know that that an animal has suffered and and you're about to chomp into it. And I, I so see that there is this whole move towards towards this kind of, um, you know, sustainability and this kind of, um, you know, on, only only hunting what you need to eat, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's, a, mm. it's a good way to, it's a good thing to promote. Yeah, there's a quite a move towards like being a wildetarian or an ecotarian. Um, yeah, I see that more and more um, now. 
uh, which is really cool because I, I think before, um, I always got this feeling before that, like, Kiwis, well, in general, no, you know, not, not the, the hunters and stuff, but um, a lot of mainstream Kiwis kind of turn their nose up at, like, wild food, you know, like rabbits and hare, like, whoa, why mm. would you eat that? You mm-hmm. know, that's, and thinking other meat was superior, whereas it's interesting, overseas, for example, in Italy, where um, we stayed for a few months a few years ago, uh, wild food is, like, that's, that's superior. You know, they really celebrate it. That's right. And so, so we should yeah. do that. Like, I mean, when you think of it, you could have uh, quail, uh, all, all sorts of things. I, I was at a restaurant in Queenstown Saturday night. I should mention it because it was a special occasion with some friends from Aussie and it was the bunker and I never get to go there. And oh my goodness, on their menu, they had hair. Yeah, they've got hair. Aus- yes, and, and I ate so the hair. I ate the hair and the duck. Yeah. Uh, it was incredible. And, you know, I kind of did it because I thought, even though I have a rabbit problem at my house, I thought I'm going to put that aside and not think of these. This is this is a properly farmed, you know, like a or a hare from I don't know Bannockburn or somewhere, and it was great because it was something local and different, yeah. different. And so maybe we yeah. need. And they had ostrich and things like that. So I suppose, oh, uh, which is weird. Yeah. I couldn't do ostrich, but but I just wonder whether you know maybe for you too. There's probably no end of things that you can create up on up on your. Oh, property. totally. I mean, well, rabbits. You know, obviously, rabbits are everywhere. So when we, when we first moved to the farm a few years ago, um, there were there was a real rabbit problem. My husband's really gotten on top of it now. Like he he works tire, tirelessly to mm. get on top of the problem. But mm. when we first moved there, rabbit was what we ate. Because that's what was there, and there was there was so much of it, and that's what we ate so much of. But now, if I feel like rabbit, and in and I send Carlos out to get one, it takes him quite a while to find one. Whereas right. before, he would have honestly opened the front door, bang, he would have got got a couple of rabbits for dinner. But that's now right. he'd actually have to go and find them, and it might take him half an hour or so. So, so now we <laughs> need a, a lot of rabbit. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Do you yeah, know exactly? This? It is a good thing. But there's nothing nicer than a rabbit stew or rabbit casserole, like a very French kind of dish, isn't it? Oh, delicious. Yeah, I know. And people think, you know, well, you know, they are pests, but yeah, there's, there is a lot of, I dare say it, like free um, free food around, you know, well, if you, if you can hunt it or if you know a hunter, obviously. That's right. Um, that's li- and it's lived a really good, you know, genuinely free range life. Yeah. So mm. I see them as a resource. Mm. Yeah, that's true. And and also like um, things like beautiful wild thyme. I mean, we're very lucky here because you can get that on the side of the road on the way to Cromwell and things. Yeah, yep. Elderberries. Elderberries yes. everywhere. They make the best um, tonic or syrup, especially really nice to have in winter because they're so high in vitamin C and antioxidants. And of course, elderflower in spring um, and summer for making elderflower syrup, really good in cocktails. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nuts. I mean, there's so many nuts to forage for and wild apples um, and mushrooms in central Otago. Chestnuts. Yeah, there's heaps. It's just endless. You just need to be creative and, and know how, how to look for them. Mushrooms, obviously, you've got to be careful because you don't want to get the wrong wrong types. Do you actually do you, for, <laughs> do you forage for them yourself? I do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I do. I mean, I normally go for the birch beliefs, and they're an easy one to tell because they don't have gills underneath. They're like, they're like real spongy underneath, and you find them under birch trees. Ah, okay, fine. So, yes. yeah, under silver birches. Okay. Um, so you're, you're, you're pretty safe with that. But, yeah, totally, you know, just putting it out there. If anyone is going mushroom foraging for the first time, definitely go with someone that who knows know. what they're doing. <laughs> but um, but yeah. you, do, you do, you know, learn pretty quick. And yeah. know, know what's okay. <laughs> know what to look for, that's right. So with Royal Burn, like, I mean, uh, do you think that you're sort of following a trend, uh, like I know in the UK, do you remember Jer- Jeremy Clarkson from Top Gear, and he's got this um, a farm gate shop, I think, over there. And um, is, that yeah. what, is that what sort of inspired you, Nadia, or was this just something that you just wanted to do anyway? Um, no, it wasn't that that inspired us, but it was pretty funny when my husband and I watched Clarkson's farm and he and one of the episodes was around his um, farm shop and we both like laughed because it reminded us so much of ourselves. <laughs> we were like, oh my goodness, it's so funny that, you know, he obviously got the same idea as us and, mm. and it, was, it was quite funny. There were just quite a few parallels with it, although I would say I, I love the show. It's such a good show. He's done yeah. a great thing for farming too, you know, showing actually some of the realities of farming. Um, but we definitely know a lot more than, than what he does. <laughs> he was <laughs> definitely so. at the start. Very, 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 very beginning of his journey. But 
Oh, um, oh, Oli. Yeah, I'm yeah. to say my husband knows a lot, 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 lot more about farming than he does. Yeah, it sounds like it. I mean, Carlos yeah. is just an incredible, um, incredible business, and you two are such a great, great partnership because of that. I think because you both uh, complement each other's uh, knowledge. But uh, with Jeremy, he seemed to just have potatoes all the time for sale, just big bags yeah. of spuds. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty funny. I loved that show. It was great. <laughs> yeah, I did too. Yeah. So, and you're finding Royal Royal Burn. Whenever I've been in there, it's been absolutely packed. Is that what's happening still? Yeah, it's we've, it's been very constant and steady, and the locals have been wonderful. I would actually say it's kind of fifty fifty though. Like we kind of get fifty percent locals who shop who um, go there regularly to get all their fresh bowls and and meat and you know other little items because we stock. Of course, we stock. Uh, lots of other items that aren't made by us but are made by other locals. Um, I would say um, 90% of the the things in the shop are um, from the region, you know, like jams and chutneys and pickles and all that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, I I do the sourcing for the shop and, uh, you know, I'm a massive fan of as local as it can be. Um, Mm. Yeah, what was the question? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, not, <we're> not, <laughs> I'm not quite sure what it was either. either. Oh, no, the locals have been great. Yeah, the support's been fantastic. But the other 50%, yeah, we, we, get, we do get quite a lot of tourists coming in as well um, that are, you know, after a little um, keepsake from central Otago and they usually go away with a, a jar of our honey or um, one of the local preserves or something. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And what I love too is the fact that you're stocking some, like, um, I think I saw something from an Italian uh, place, like some local ready-made uh, pasta meals as well. Quite a good idea for people that don't yeah, want to go to the Queen supermarket. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. The um, Giovi in Frankton. Just so some beautiful fresh pasta. Yeah, it's lovely. And, and you, know, you know what I love is the fact that in the last two and a half years, all we've done is we've really focused on local, and that's what's worked so well, I think, with this particular store, hasn't it, with Royal Burn? Yeah, it does. And I, I think people are going more back that way, um, and, and for a variety of reasons. But, you know, what's happening globally, for example, you know, it's, it's quite chaotic with shipping and freight and, and everything and imports and exports and stuff. And so we're, we're going more back to basics, which is great, I think. Yeah, I've, I've found that actually, you know, even just trying to ship product mm. is quite difficult now. So that's an even more reason to, to go local. Mm, yeah, that's right. You know, not just support your local community, but also it actually does become easier and, and in some ways um, cheaper. I think so too. And, you know, that's the thing that what surprises me is you don't have to... Some people think that organic necessarily uh, has to be incredibly pricey and only people like Prince Charles, you know, eat organic food. But not. I'm not finding that in your store. I'm finding that I can get better quality vegetables uh, for, for ch- even cheaper than supermarkets. It's crazy. Yeah, well, I think that's because we do it direct, you know. There isn't anyone in between. It's just harvested, grown by us, harvested by us, delivered by us and then sold, sold by us. That's the key. Um, and saying that, um, the, the organic market garden is hard. <laughs> it's hard work. Our team um, works so hard there. And it's really tricky actually growing, um, having a market garden on the Crown Terrace because the, the growing season's so short. Right. Um, yeah, it's been an interesting learning curve. I've learned so much. But I, I, like, I know that we produce, we grow really, really good vegetables there. Like the carrots are, are what carrots should taste like, you know. Yes, so sweet. when people try them, they're like, oh gosh, mm. this is what a real carrot tastes like. Like it's actually got a carrot flavour. It's not just <laughs> plain sweet, like sugar water, mm. like a lot of them, you know, the ones from the supermarket. Um, it's actually got a ca- real carrot flavour. Carrot flavour. Um, so I know we grow, yeah, I know we grow great vegetables, but it is quite a um, challenge, and especially with being organic too, you know, all the, the manual labour required. Um, yeah, yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah, I can, I can yeah. just imagine. But we love it. It's a real passion, so... Well, that's yeah. the thing. I think we do th- when you do things easy, it's not kind of the end result. You can feel that the love hasn't, you know, or the or that extra attention hasn't gone into it. So maybe, you know, that and, and that's the plus side, Daddy, that people we we we're, we're tasting that in the food, you know, which is which is a great thing, isn't it? Oh, that's awesome. I hope so because we our team is amazing. Yeah, everyone on the farm, from the eggery team to the butchery team, the shepherds, you know, the market gardeners, um, our apiarists, they are such great people who love food like it's a it's a prerequisite to be part of our team you have to love 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 good food and have an appreciation for you know great farming practices and really want to improve everything the way that we do and so Mm. i do yes 
generally think it comes through. Oh, of course it comes so through. And it's the same with my food bag, you know. And, I mean, there's a reason that that's, that's been so popular. You know, I mean... Yeah, it was. Uh, it's it's been revolutionary for a lot of people, and it's also made them like. I mean, I, I was hooked on it for ages. <laughs> I'm having a wee break at the moment, but I really did. I, I loved it because I felt like everything was interesting and a bit exotic. And you get you do get bored. Even the best cooks among mm. us, you do. You yeah. just you just want a helping hand sometimes, and you want to go. Oh, hey, that's yep. something I didn't think of doing. I definitely. You know, and it's not it's not hard. You know, that's the great I, thing. I, even I get that. I get it all the time. <laughs> so, like, I like and needing inspiration, needing extra inspiration, definitely. Of course, that's right. And so that's yeah. all going great. What about MasterChef? Was that was that a good experience? I suppose we can't talk too much about it. But um, did you enjoy well, make, the making final, that? The finals on, yeah, no, oh, it was it was such an awesome experience. It was really cool to kind of come full circle. You know, I, I was on the show twelve years ago, 20, 20, 2010 I won it, but oh. it aired in twenty eleven. So yeah, like twelve years ago. And so it was really special to come back as a judge and then hand it on and give someone else the opportunity that, that I had, you know, 12 years ago. Um, so it was great. And all the contestants are really, really cool people, some very, very talented cooks mm. in that competition, um, to the point where I was like, oh, thank goodness they weren't in my series. <laughs> I, <was> like, <laughs> I, I wouldn't want it. <laughs> it's like, these yeah. guys the finals, are good. Yeah. They are really good, yeah. But the final's on Tuesday. Tomorrow. Oh, very good. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll so watch we that. will know who. So at, at the moment, there's Alice, Sam, and Elliot left in the competition. One of them will go out tonight Gosh. in the semi final, and then tomorrow is the final. That's it. Yeah. Then they have a winner. Wow. Yeah, How, that's right. Yeah, gosh. And you imagine those people reliving that because there's so much pressure. I don't know how people do it. I really don't with that because I think, um, you know, being a cook is all well and good when you've got all day and you're relaxed. And But th- that sort of pressure uh-huh. and in front of a nation, you know, and live and, and filmed rather, you know, that's that's hard. It's tough. It is. It's totally different because you, you do get some people going, oh, I would have done this or I would have done that. And it's like, yeah, but you would have, you, you would have been able to plan it. You would have been able to get whatever ingredients you wanted. You wouldn't have been under the pressure with cameras in your face and someone interviewing you, asking you what's going wrong and what are you going to do about it and under this time pressure. Yeah, yeah so it, it totally changes everything. Yeah, it's not just like cooking in your kitchen. No, not at all. I mean, actually, no, I, no. I, it amazes me how some of the contestants are so nice when you, when you guys go in to talk to them because I'd be just like, leave me alone. I'm trying to whisk Yeah, well, I was know. always conscious of that. I, I reckon when they were doing the cook and, you know, the judges come round, I was always like, oh, I don't want to annoy them. <laughs> so I'd, I'd be very quick. I'd just ask one quick question and then I'd try and be out because I just remember how annoyed I used to be when I was mm. on the show when the judges would come round. <laughs> I'd be thinking inside. I had to be you know, grip my teeth and smile and be all polite, but I was actually thinking, can you just get lost right now? Yeah, I yeah, just like, want to uh, focus uh, on my cooking. Well, I, t- I totally get <laughs> yeah. that. And this is the thing with TV is there's a lot of um, stuff going on. You know, it's quite a... It's quite a clumsy medium because so many people to take, you know, n- n- are needed to make the show. I mean that in a positive way sort of thing. But, you know, yeah. it's just like there's a lot going on. And to bring this all together and, and make it look seamless, pretty challenging. So, yeah, you know, I mean, congratulations on your work in the show because it has been, it's been really entertaining. And everyone loves, I think in winter particularly, like food becomes really important, especially in the cold. And so watching yeah. these creations has actually been really good. Oh, awesome. Hopefully, yeah, it's been inspiring. Yeah. For some well, people. And hopefully it's inspired some people to enter for the next one. Well, that's the thing. That's the thing, because yeah. you could discover the next great, you know, great, great Kiwi chef. And, uh, I mean, your journey has been an incredible one. I mean, it's, uh, so that's, uh, is that 10 years ago, did you say? 12 years? Uh, 12. 12. 12, I think. Goodness me. Yeah, yeah. Does Wait, it seem that long years. ago? Um, good question. So much has happened since then. Yeah, it does actually feel ages ago. And I think it's because I've just packed so much into the last 11 to 12 years. Yeah. I reckon. <laughs> but I, I used to be so timid. Gosh, when I was on the show, when I was like 24, 25, I was so timid and um, very, very nervous. Mm. Um, yeah, and I can't kind of imagine kind of doing it doing it again and being that person <laughs> yeah that's right well i mean you know 12 years is a long time in anyone's life and you've had so many great successes and so so many cool things and i tell you what um as uh, on behalf of you know like central otago we are pretty happy to have you living in our neck of the woods and and to be reaping the benefits of you know your work well, thank with, you so much Leah. Oh, no, that really? is so kind 
to no, say. No, for, for real, so because because we're a nation of knockers, right? We are we are um, we're known for um, a tall poppy sort of syndrome, and it's nice to actually appreciate and thank people for the work they do because. Yeah, because we need people, uh, you know, trying to improve the quality of our food and, and, I don't know, and giving us the good stuff that's not toxic and sprayed with all sorts of stuff, you know, which I think pre- people are mindful of these days more than ever. They don't they don't want that anymore in their food yeah, production, yeah, you know? True. Yeah, true. Yeah. So, I mean, the farming thing's been an interesting journey and, I mean, the biggest thing I've learned is, you know, there's, it's not black and white or right or wrong or... Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, such a big topic and every farm is different. And, you know, there are a lot of farmers out there doing such great work and, and I know a lot of them feel a bit knocked um, at the moment. And, and, and I would say, there's, uh, having come from like an urban background but married, you know, to a farmer and now um, working and living on a farm, um, yeah, a lot of it does come down to misunderstanding and miscommunication around, uh, around farming. Between, between, I guess, the townies and rural folk. But, you know, that's also one of the reasons why with Rural Burn, we want to create that direct connection because we want to teach people more about where their food comes from and how it actually gets to their plate. Like, the, the mm. whole story about, it, you know, not just the, the pretty bits, but also yeah. the, the more... Um, the necessary bits. The, the, the other real bits, like, you know, the, the, the killing of, of the animal and, and all of that. You know, we... We want to be very um, open and and invite people into hearing more and understanding more about yeah how food actually gets to the plate. Absolutely, yeah. the process. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. The whole journey, the whole journey. Well, it is, and it's it's um it's a good thing, and uh, I think we could all do with learning a bit more about that. I've got one more question because I know you got car car with children, and they've been amazing. Can you thank them for us? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they have. My mum just took them out. We just got got back to my mum's house, and she just quickly grab them out of the oh, car so now, now I've got peace and quiet oh bless <laughs> it well I was going to wind it up because I thought you were so busy but I could talk a little bit more um, I was going I was going to say Nadia uh, and I can't end the interview without <laughs> asking you this but have you yeah. received I hate to bring this up did you ever get a proper apology from Simon Henry oh um, eventually his um, I don't know maybe his peer no his office manager his, call, it was his office manager sent me um, an email yeah. Okay. Uh, not on the phone, though. Yeah. Not a personal apology. No, not a personal one, but one mm. through his office manager. Okay. Yeah. But mm. I mean, I always thought, like, I never, I never felt like I needed one or anything. It was, I mean, and to be honest, that that whole thing that all blew out. My goodness, I hated being the eye of that storm. Um, yes. Ne- never realised it was going to blow up like that. But um, it never really offended me personally but I did realize after um sitting on it for a couple of days I did realize that you know I'm I'm really thick-skinned and I've had the um opportunity to to build up a really tough skin and you know lots of support and I'm very confident but Mm. I did think I guess you know it's um what's that quote A, a company's culture is shaped by the worst of what their leader is willing to accept. Yes. Oh, the, the worst of their, their leader's behaviour. And so yes. I just think I was like, oh, you know, you, he will be looked up to by a lot of people and we do want leaders who, you know, do, <laughs> who um, actually treat people really well and, and you know, that, that, that do great things. And so I just kind of thought, I was like, well, and I also don't want people to um, think that I didn't think that it was important. If, you know, if it was happening to someone else, I would stand up and defend them. Yeah. I don't feel like I needed defending, but if mm. it had been to someone else, I would want to stand up and defend them. So mm. it yeah. was a, it was so a bizarre it was kind of it was, it. <laughs> Yeah, it was a bizarre little time, wasn't it? It was a really strange thing, and I, and I could I could just kind of sense that you were just like, oh, just blow over, please, and let's leave it. Which is why I wasn't sure whether I should even ask you, but you know, um, let's park that one then completely, and let's talk about get back to food. And just before you go, what about um, what are you loving to eat at the moment? What what's really exciting you? Um, well, because we just touched down in Auckland and, you know, Auckland's the kind of the, the mecca for Asian food. Yeah. Um, I just had some Vietnamese spring rolls, which I love. And mm. so we don't, when, when we're at home on the farm, our diet, believe it or not, is actually, dare I say it, kind of a bit boring. Like it's beautiful food. We, mm. we have the freshest produce imaginable, but it's not very exotic. They're like quite plain um, meals. Yeah, well, it's just, and, it, and I don't have the choice because I've got to eat 
what's in the garden and what's in season. So when it's winter, there's the the choice isn't that much. I mean, it's basically pumpkin, cabbage, parsnips, carrots, <laughs> yeah. yep. uh, cavalonero, kale, and potatoes. That's about it. Well, that's silver true. beet. Tons of silver beet. Lots and lots of silver beet. We have silver <laughs> beet every night, and the kids are getting bored of it. They're getting bored of yeah. it. Yeah, because... But not, um, never very exotic. <laughs> yeah, we used to have a lot of silver beet when I was growing up. My mum said it was exceptionally good for us with all the iron in it. Yeah, it is good. It's got to be good for you. I like it now. I actually really love it. I mean, I guess there's ways you know to what I do with jazz that? it up. What do you do? To jazz it up. So I toast some pine nuts and, and then set them aside. And then I saute the silver beet in um, a bit of olive oil or sunflower oil from the, from the farm. Mm. Um, and just a little knob of butter. Until, and you just slowly saute it down until it's kind of wilted. And then I, th- and I throw in a handful of currants, of dried currants. Oh, currants. And then I, and then I put the p- toasted pine nuts back in. You give it all a toss, Yum. put it on your serving plate, and just before serving, just a little squeeze of lemon. Yum, yum. Brightens it all up. But the sweetness, like just that little pops of sweetness from the currants and the, mm. the nuttiness from the toasted pine nuts. It's yeah. delicious with some of it. Yeah. How, how good are toasted pine nuts? I mean, I could have them on almost everything, actually. Yeah, they are, they're good, but they're, they're quite expensive. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But but if you just have yeah. a little a little scattering and, you know, it's like, um, yeah, I mean, that, that just these little tips, for example, oh, what, what can you do with... Um, Brussels sprouts, uh, well, well, they're, oh, great. they're great with nuts, aren't they? With walnuts? Oh, oh, mm. oh so do you know, oh, a Brussels sprouts one of my favourite um, vegetables ever. So, yeah, if anyone is out there and doesn't like Brussels sprouts, it's probably because you've grown up with them being boiled. And, yes, boiled Brussels sprouts are bleh. They're gross. I don't, I, I don't even eat boiled Brussels sprouts. <laughs> yeah. Yuck. Um, but what you want to do, the best way to do Brussels sprouts is roast it because they do actually have a real natural sweetness. And especially if you live down our way, you, we get the best Brussels sprouts because we get such hard frost and they mm. love frost because when you get a hard frost, the um, starches in the, in the plant convert to, um, some of the starches convert into sugars to try and protect the plant from their, their cells freezing. Um, so and then they end up being sweeter as a, as a, Right. Know, um, as a result. Interesting. Yeah, interesting, eh? Yeah, nature's so clever. But the, so because they've got those natural sugars in them, roasting them really brings out their, their sweetness. Yes. So just cut them in half and then toss them with olive oil. Um, if you want, this is what I've been doing lately, I mix a little bit of almond butter with miso paste mm. and a tiny bit of hot water just to loosen it and then I toss that all with the Brussels sprouts as well salt and pepper, roast them in the oven, you know, about 180 degrees or so and maybe about 15, 20 minutes until they're just starting to caramelize around them. Oh, divine. Or for some finely chopped bacon, toss that through before you roast them as well. Oh, yeah. And you get this like sweet, kind of sweet saltiness with the Brussels sprouts and mm. it's so delicious. It's, it'll convert any Brussels sprout hater. I reckon too. Or and- 98 90, I, I reckon I, I, they're one of my favourites. I can't get enough of them, but I served them um, for dinner with some friends once. And I remember my husband saying, A lot of people hate Brussels sprouts. Are you confident? But I kind of did them jazzy, you know, a bit like not not with a miso paste, but with uh, with some nuts and sort of roasted. And they were, they were amazing. But you know, it's funny yeah. you say about the bacon, because I reckon if you've got children who are veggie shy, if you add bacon to a lot of vegetables, <laughs> they're suddenly into it, aren't they? Yeah, that is true. Yeah, so just a little scattering of finely diced up bacon. Yeah, definitely helps sometimes. You don't yeah. need don't need and a lot, you know. No, you don't. No, like two two rashes, you know, just finely diced. Yeah, and it's like you know, it's it's this is a thing. Like I think in in New Zealand, I think a good thing we could. I'm not advocating vegetarianism or veganism, but I think if we start more focusing on the vegetables and you think about yeah. your, your extra protein, your protein last, if you, you know, and sometimes you find that the vegetables are enough because you've done them in such an interesting way and that, that can actually, uh, you know, encourage, you know, perhaps uh, less, you know, meat eating, which we know is, is I great, totally agree. You know? I, I totally agree. Like um, my, one, my most popular cookbook to date out of all 10 that I've done um, is my book called Vegetable, and that's uh, it's a vegetable book. I, I say that it's a book for vegetarians, vegans, and omnivores alike. Um, right. But it's because yeah. it's just about heroing vegetables because um, vegetables can be the star of a meal. It doesn't yeah. always have to be meat. Absolutely not. Like once you start, once you flick your mindset to to instead you go, you know how most people kind of think of, oh, what am I going to cook for dinner? And they start with. I uh, will have steak or we'll have yeah, chicken and then right. they build the meal around that. That's right. But if you actually change your mindset to going, oh, 
let's have eggplant for dinner or the yeah. courgettes for dinner and then you build the meal around that. And it's just a little change in mindset, but the, the things you come up with, wow. Like, I, my favorite meals, um, most of my favorite meals are um, vegetable-based meals. You know, yes, miso roasted eggplant or like a pumpkin Thai curry and mm. oh, so many good things. Harissa roasted carrots with like um, natural yogurt, labneh oh, yeah. and, and herbs and and Dhaka, oh, so many amazing things that you can do. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that's a great concept. I've seen a sort of something like that carrot dish, and it's absolutely beautiful. And I heard about this from a Greek um, chef, actually, and she had a book, and she said that they celebrate the vegetable, and so she had this amazing spring dish, and it was like, um, she just had a whole bunch of greens. It was like, um, oh, I can't remember, I wish I knew, uh, peas and mint and, and maybe beans, but the whole thing was just this beautiful and garlicky and lemony and, and yummy. And, yeah. and and you just, it was divine. And I don't think, I don't even know if they served anything else with it, maybe a small piece of fish or something, but the, I wish I could remember the, th- the other ingredients. But um, And I just thought, hey, vegetables first and then, and then the other kind of follows, or you may not need it, or... Yeah, you know, or or an eggplant. It feels like meat anyway. You know, half the time. You know, if you sort yeah. of cook it mushrooms, the right way. Mushrooms, port, like portobello mushrooms. Oh, oh yum. Yeah. So, or a cauliflower steak, delicious. Mm. So it's like Rub that with some tamula or some harissa, roast it until it's caramelised. Mm. Yum. What I find mm. is, and that's oh well, yeah, I, we could talk for ages. Yeah, no, <laughs> well, that's what I learned from food bag is like you know just those extra. You think the meal's done, but then you just add something else and something else, and it's like hey. Whammo, there is there is a really special dish with the heaps of different flavours that you wouldn't have, you know, thought of. Like, um, I often we would get the bag and I go, gee, um, surely you know, there's all these different things. And I thought, oh, we won't we won't be needing all of these, but they just each ingredient just added the extra layer and the extra texture. Yeah, you kind of want to have a few uh, like key stars up up your sleeve, like key kind of um, flavour stars up your sleeve. So. Um, in, a, in a lot of my books, I always have like a section on your essentials for your flavor boosting essentials. Mm. So, you know, there'll, there'll be like a recipe for a chamula, which is like a herby, garlicky, marinade sauce type thing, which you can make a big batch of and you can freeze it or just keep it in a jar in the fridge. Or, you know, like a spice rub, um, kind of Middle Eastern style or Indian style um, or harissa, which is like a, um, North African spice chili paste um, mix. Um, you know, all those things, that's, or, or a really good a recipe for a really good pesto or a really good sweet chili um, sauce. And if you've got all of those kind of basics up your sleeve, like you don't actually have to do much to a few really good quality ingredients. It's just like a one quick, you know, add a, cup, a tablespoon of that and it just like brightens the whole meal and transforms it. Yeah, I reckon you're right. And it's like, um, it's, it, it, it doesn't, need to be a lot. Hey, how do you find it? I was going to ask you, because I've got like a 21-year-old son and he loves doing his steak and things, but and, and he wants to really get into the kitchen, but he's like kind of a little bit, you know, um, probably nervous about trying different things. What do you say to sort of people who are, you know, maybe in flats and things and they're just uh, struggling with the same old, you know, the mashed potato and the broccoli and the steak and they need to branch out? I mean, pasta's such a good option, isn't it? To make it a bit quirky. Pasta? Yeah. So you say pasta? Pasta. Yeah, pasta is always a good one to fall back on, but that's, that's that's I think what most people fall back on. Well, actually, for people flatting, like I'm not I'm not trying to give a plug here, but this is genuinely my my best advice um, because I get people saying to me all the time that it, like in a flatting situation, how awesome it is. Bargain Box, which is um, the one of the subsidiary, uh, you know, food delivery kits of my food bag, is awesome for flatters because it's re- it's economical it's really economical it's like it's six dollars per person per plate and um it's a big big portion so people have enough for lunch the next day as well so it seems to really suit flatters and um and then and it's great because they can share the cooking you know because the recipes and everything in there it seems to work really really well for flatters i always get that feedback yeah, yeah that's interesting hey nadia i've just had a message through from a um a listener and he said that um he obviously gets the family of four food bag, but he said that um, he's a tradie and he said mm-hmm. he, he wanted uh, bigger portions, I think, was the message from, uh, from the producer. Um, uh, do you think that could be something you could look Maybe into? Maybe he should go to Bargain Box. Oh. Maybe Bargain Box might be better suited to them potentially because Bargain Box is really decent portions. Right, yeah, well, p- perhaps, you know, it's finding the right box. The food's kind of you. a bit simpler. The food's a bit simpler than my food bag. 
Mm. Um, you know, it's things like nachos, lasagna, um, all that, that, that type of food, you know, um, chicken stir fry with rice, that, that type of thing. Quite, quite hearty. Yeah, yeah, hearty and simple and very family orientated. Yeah, so, so if you're a um, hard-working guy, you know, because, I mean, tradesmen work flipping hard and they have big appetites and my son, you know, is, is no different, you know, and uh, so it's like maybe he, you'd suggest to this listener that they check out the, uh, the bargain yeah, box. Yeah, try bargain box potentially. Yeah, just try that out, I reckon. Mm. Yeah. Okay, and see how that, how that goes. Yeah. Or, I mean, would you ever consider, I mean, can you do like a family of six kind of deal <laughs> or extra large portions? Well, bargain box does. Right. Bargain Box does. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay, so it is cool. for like bigger families and stuff too. Yeah, yeah. right. Okay, cool. Because that's something I haven't actually um, dipped my toe into. So hopefully that answers the question. It's good that people are listening and, and you yeah. know, that got some feedback. Uh, it's nice because, and, you know, guys guys like hearing about food, I think. It's certainly not, I mean, things have changed a lot in our country, thank goodness, since the 50s when, you know, the the, the woman had to, you know, have the, have the meat and three veg ready on the table at, you know, six o'clock. It's, yeah. It's so oh, great. Yeah. So yeah. many guys are into cooking. No, it's awesome. I mean, it's pretty much, it's 50-50. Mm. I reckon, from what I've seen, it's like 50-50 now. And it's really nice, actually, with um, the likes of my food bag and bargain box. You actually see a lot of um, men in their older age that, you know, grew up in that, uh, or lived in that traditional household where their, their wife or their partner did do the, the cooking, or well, mm. all the cooking, actually. Mm. And now that they're retired, they actually start getting into it. We see a lot of that. It's a very, very, very common reoccurring theme where um, the male who never cooked throughout his whole life and is now retired now suddenly starts getting into cooking and finds this like new interest and love and passion yeah so good and yeah. gets to learn it's heartening. It's heartening to hear that, and I think I think some of the best chefs are um, are men. <laughs> uh, actually, absolutely, uh, they really are. There's, I mean, there's, it's it's across the board. Who do you? What do you make of? I have to ask you. What do you make of Gordon Ramsay? <laughs> do you find him entertaining? Um, I haven't. I haven't really watched any of his shows. I've only kind of seen snippets. You know where. He's Yelling at people, um, I don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I don't, I don't know whether it's for for TV or. Yeah. I, I assume that maybe his, his, you know, that is definitely part of his real persona. I'm guessing. Sort of his um, brand, but, though, yeah, isn't I, it? I never you know. know. Yeah, I guess it is. Which yeah, I feel sorry for him that he has to have a brand where he's all. Um, all fiery and shouty. <laughs> yeah, I'd hate to work in a kitchen with the guy. I find him, I mean, um, the boys in my family quite like him, I think, um, because, well, you know, he does some interesting stuff. He did a show um, with a guy called Gina. He's obviously, I mean, he's a good. really good cook. Yeah, he like is. Like his cookbook. The yeah. meals in his cookbook so fantastic, yeah. But it'd be a difficult character, I think, to, to work with. Um, definitely a very different kettle of fish, to use a bad term. We're seeing as we're talking about food. Uh, to, to you, Nadia, uh, you sort of have a different approach. But, you know, what what's really great in our chat and um, what I've loved is just the fact that how excited food gets you. And it's kind of like with me too, I'm kind of excited to talk to you because I've... I've learned, you know, I've learned things from his shows in the past. And um, but I was, tell me the name of that book. It's called Vegful, is it? Because I'd like to get Vegful. That. Yeah, Vegful. yeah. So it's a vegetable book. When did so that come out? It came um, came out a few years ago, and it actually won runner-up best vegetable cookbook in the world. Uh. Well, best, it, it was in the vegetarian category, category mm -hmm. um, and it came runner-up in, in the world at the Gourmet Amazing. World um, Cookbook Awards. Um, but yeah, I call it a vegetable cookbook rather mm. than a vegetarian cookbook because I believe it's for everyone regardless of whether you you are vegetarian, vegan or you're an omnivore. Mm. Yeah, it's just to celebrate vegetables more. Yeah, terrific. And I think that's that's just great. Hey, well, I better let you go. What are, what are you um are you away for a wee while from Queenstown with the family? Yeah, well, we're visiting my um my family in Auckland because we've got a couple of new additions to the family. My my brother and my sister have both just very recently had um babies. My my brother actually ended up delivering his first child, his baby, um, oh. at my mum's house. By himself. Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. Unexpected. <laughs> yeah, yes, I can't wait to hear the, the full rundown, the full story. Oh. But he did really well, apparently, yeah. My yeah. goodness. And everything was all good, thank goodness, yeah. So you'll be, you'll be clucking over a, a little baby and uh, just reuniting with family. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. And probably they'll get you to cook. <laughs> and, ho and, and just hoping that everything's all good on the farm. But we do have an amazing team who, um, 
said, don't worry, everything's going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> everything's going to yeah. be fine. But I am constantly checking in. We're constantly checking in. <laughs> oh, of course you are. You've got to have a break at some point. I mean, you don't want to have a busman's holiday when you're cooking all the time as well. Maybe enjoy some of those yeah. some of those amazing uh, um, Asian restaurants in, in Auckland, like you say. I mean, great Malaysian and uh, Vietnamese and, oh, gosh, so many. So much good stuff yeah. to taste. Yeah, totally. Oh, well, enjoy yourself. And um, I really appreciate your time today. It's been amazing. Could have talked. Yeah, lovely to chat to you, Leanne. And yeah. thank you so much again for your um, very kind, encouraging words. Um, we love being down in the region. We just think that it's the most amazing place in the world. And everyone's been really welcoming and um, just such a great, amazing community. Yeah, so thank you to everyone out there who's, who's yeah, been into the shop and, and is so encouraging with um, what we're trying to do with our farming journey. Yeah, yeah. No. And we look forward to meeting more people. Yeah, totally. You're so you're so welcome, and everyone get to Royal Burn in Arrowtown. It is it's it's the bomb. It's great. <laughs> Thanks, Nadia. <laughs> Thanks, have, a, have a good break. Cheers. Cheers, Nadia Lim on South Bend on the platform. What